Okay, so we have built in on our sketch layer some 100% opaque brush strokes. You can see that with this brush, it looks kind of like a sponge painting, or it looks like it's a lot of felt, a lot of soft edges together. And you can see the checkerboard coming through on some of it where it's not quite fully opaque. So I want to keep building up the sketch a little bit. That's why I have a toned background behind it and a white background so I can see it on both. Right. And the white can help me see where these holes are. So I'll keep using that same brush. I'm stealing colors from my photo reference using a brush that's a little bit bigger than I'm comfortable with. Doing my own kind of caricature, in this case, of Godzilla. Right. And then I'm going to continue with this sketch layer, this speed painting layer, because I want to just get it kind of loosely blocked in. But I can see that this brush isn't going to be able to do the whole job for me because it's too soft, right? So the next step is to continue the blocking in, in my case, with a slightly sharper brush. So we get some brush variety. And you don't expect a traditional painter to only use one brush for the whole job, right? Even graffiti artists customize the tips of their spray cans to get different kinds of marks. Wait, but you can't change the hardness of the brush. You have to switch a different brush, right? Yeah, I can't change the hardness of this brush. So you're right. I have to change to a brush where I can change the hardness. And so far, I haven't changed anything about the brush. I haven't changed its opacity. I haven't changed its size. So I have all of those options open to me. But what I want you to do is with your speed painting layer, let's do this in a pretty um, kind of understandable and systematic way. So instead of just changing to a new brush and painting right on top of it, I'm going to build on top of this. So the only the main goal of this first kind of base painting layer is to to fill in everything behind. And if I want to be like just really sure to do that, what I can do is make a blank layer behind it. Just pick kind of a middle color make my brush even bigger. Come on. Photo buckets be or photo piece beginning to lag on me a little bit. And what I can do is just put this layer behind it and then merge the layers, right? Just really kind of fill it in with this soft, big brush. Okay, now let's take that, move it behind. So you can see that kind of filled in some of those gaps. Right, and now I want to merge those together. Select them both, layer, merge layers. So that's my sketch layer. You it, did it that way so you could use a softer brush to fill those gaps in? I did it that way just so, yeah, I didn't have to keep replacing what I'd already painted. So that's just filling in from behind. So now we have 100% solid, you know, mass of paint, right? Kind of a, a blob. And because of the brush I used, it's pretty soft. And so now, I'm going to start doing the refined painting layer. So I make a new layer. I'm going to lock the sketch layer. I don't want to accidentally keep painting on that. And I'm going to call this refined paint. Now with refined paint, I'm going to allow myself 
to use different brushes, different opacities, different sizes. So first of all, if I work a little bit smaller with this brush, it's going to look like it's sharper edged, even though it's not, just because it's, it's being used over a smaller amount of area. So if I reduce it to like 50 pixels, I'm still using it at 100% opacity. That's going to look a lot sharper, like I'm drawing lines. But when I zoom in at full resolution, you can see it still has that softness. It's just in a much smaller space, right? So size is one way I can play with the brush. The main thing that I like to use on my refine layer is I take the opacity down so that it starts to blend with the other colors and blend with the layers underneath it. So I'm going to take it to about 65% opacity and I might choose a different brush. This one's a little bit bolder and sharper, right? But you see at 65% opacity, I can see the colors that come from underneath it. And I can start refining it that way. I can also play with, let's see, the brush dynamics, right? I want its size to vary. I want its angle to vary, especially with this kind of brush. I want its roundness to vary. It's minimal roundness doesn't really matter because I'm not doing something pressure sensitive. It's minimal diameter doesn't really matter. But now you see how that brush, yeah, it's just a little bit more dynamic, even though I'm just using a trackpad. I can play a little bit with the position jitter. That's just kind of where it centers itself. And now, yeah, that's looking like a more useful tool. Wait, when you adjusted the opacity, were you adjusting the opacity of the layer or of the brush? The of, brush the, right? of the brush, of the brush, yep. So the options at the top, these are the, your tool options. Over here, these are your layer options. All right. So now, I'm gonna do something that I just do for the refined paint layer. I'm gonna start giving myself a palette to work with. Like what colors do I actually want to see? So the way I do that is I hold down option. I'm actually gonna take it to 100% opacity for this. I got in the chat that it's looking really ugly, right? Your own work. Well, mine is too. You know, It looks rough at the beginning and that's why we're refining it. But what I'm gonna do is just off to the side, I'm gonna paint a little swatch of some of these big colors I think are gonna be useful. You'll see a lot of digital painters do this. Because I don't necessarily want uh, to have to choose my colors from the color selector. Because the colors are complicated. So if I just choose some and put them in, they're often gonna look like too intense. If I try to match that red, now I might pick something like this to match that red, but to compare it with, with what's really used, that's just really, really intense. So I like to steal it from different references, kind of see what's there. And then the black is not even black, you know, from your photos. So holding down option, stealing a color. That's the black I will use. And it's not black. Real black is down here. And that's more intense. And then these are a lot of kind of bluish, darker tones. Oh, so you're making a palette by picking a range of colors from your reference? Yes. 
you want us to do that too, or are you just demonstrating? It's something. It's something you can do. You'll see why it's helpful later, right? Because I can see these more clearly, just like they're on, you know, a palette that I'm painting with, rather than always trying to guess at what it is by clicking on the little pixels of my reference. I think it's a little harder with the human portrait because there's so many little variances. Well, in like absolutely. So that doesn't mean that these are the only colors I'm going to use, but these are the colors I'm going to mix with. Right. And like, what is your lightest color? What is your darkest color? You don't want to use white and black. You want to get it from your reference. So my lightest color is like a cream, a creamy white, but not a perfect white. So now I'm going to take my opacity down to around 60. And I'm using a slightly smaller brush. And now I'm going to use my palette. And I'll just start with the eye so you can see how that works. And each time I use one of these new colors at 60% opacity, I'm making a brand new tone, right, by overlapping these. But what I'm not doing is I'm not going to zoom in really close yet on my image. I'm still just trying to get the basics in there, right? And I can still steal colors from my base painting layer as well. But by having my palette, I kind of have my core tones that I can return to and mix between. I can even throw in some unexpected color, like a little bit of blue in the eye, so I can react to it, or a little bit of pink around it. I'm not trying to make a photo reproduction, right? I'm trying to make, figure out my version of this. And one thing I notice is there's no orange anywhere. There's a lot of yellow. It looks like there's orange there, but the color itself is really just like that. So if I wanted something more orange, I could also throw that into my palette. There's nothing saying you need to use believable colors, right? I'm gonna throw that orange in there. just so I have it to kind of work with. Whenever you come across a color you think is gonna be useful, that's different than what you already have, you can add it to your palette. But again, we work kind of generally big and basic, and we work towards the specific. So don't try to finish anything off too soon until you've really kind of explored all the options. So I'm gonna move quickly away from the eye and think about, okay, well, what about the texture of some of these scales? What are the colors involved there? I think I need some more greens. I like some of these blues from underneath. And then this isn't drawing, this is still using shapes, but I can kind of start to define some forms like eyelids raising above his eye. Ooh, and time just flies when you're doing this. That's why the online videos are always sped up because it takes, it can take hours, you know, to, to kind of be happy even just with a basic painting.
And that's why we're just getting introduced to this.